today's video, we are going to find equations of polynomials using um, systems of equations when we're given a table of data. So given the x and y table um, that's listed here, we can use the finite differences method to determine the degree of this polynomial. To determine the um, degree, we simply uh, subtract. We can either start at 0 and subtract 4, or we can start at 52 and subtract 30 and then keep going. Since 52 minus 30 is going to give me a positive 22, I'm going to start and go in that direction. And then 30 minus 14 gives me a positive 16. And then uh, 14 minus 4 gives me a 10. And 4 minus 0 is 4. Since these numbers aren't all the same, we know it's not a degree 1, and we have to keep going. So we do 22 minus 16, which is 6, and 16 minus 10 is 6, and 10 minus 4 is 6. So we ended up with all 6s here, which means that um, since this is the second difference, we had 1 here, and this is the second one, um, that means that we have a degree of 2. which means that the standard form of this polynomial is going to be something in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And now since we have um, our table of x and y's, we know what x and y are, we're going to have to figure out what a is, what b is, and what c is. Since we have the three unknowns, a, b, and c, we're going to need to create three equations for this system of equations in order to determine what a is, what b is, and what c is. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the x and y values that are listed on the table. So let me clear this up a little bit so that I have some more space to write. One second. All right, so in order to create the three equations, like I said, we're going to use the standard form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and we're going to use points from our table over here. So I'm going to start by using the very first point that's listed, 1, 0, which means I'm going to plug 0 in for my y, and I'm going to plug 1 in for x. So I would have a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c, which we can just simplify to 0 equals a plus b plus c. Now I'm going to move down to the second point that's on the table to create my second equation. So I'm going to plug the 4 in for uh, the y value. So I get 4 equals a times, I plug the 2 in for x now, so I get 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. So now um, I can simplify that to 4 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. And then I move down to the third point on the table, and I use 14 for the y value, and 3 for the x value, so I get a times 3 squared, plus b times 3, plus c, which becomes 14 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. And so now I have my three equations for my system of equations that I can use to solve um, for the three unknown variables that we have, a, b, and c. Okay, so with this system of equations with three variables, there's multiple different ways to, use, uh, to solve it. I'm going to use the elimination method. So while I'm looking at all three of these, I notice that um, all three equations have a C term that only has a 1 in front of it, um, which is going to make it kind of easy to eliminate that C variable. So in order to eliminate the C variable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the very first equation by a negative 1. And when I do this, I have to make sure I distribute that negative 1 to everything that's inside of those parentheses on both sides of the equal sign. So negative 1 times 0 is 0. 
negative 1 times a is a negative a, negative 1 times b is negative b, and negative 1 times c is negative c. Now I'm going to also take this second equation here, the 4 equals 4a um, plus, 4, or plus 2b plus c, and I'm not going to change it at all. And now what I can do with these two equations is I can add them together, and when I do that, 0 plus 4 gives me 4, negative a plus 4a gives me a 3a, and negative b plus 2b gives me b, and then the negative c plus c becomes 0, and so they cancel out. And so now I have an equation where I only have two unknown variables, which is going to make solving the system of equations a lot easier. But since I only have one equation right now that has two variables, I need to create a second equation with only two variables. To do this, I'm going to now pair the second and third equation together, and I'm going to eliminate the c variable again. So in this case, I'm going to take the 4 um, equals 4a plus 2b plus c, and I'm going to multiply that one by a negative 1. And so in this case, I get negative 4 equals negative 4a plus 2b plus c. And now when I add this equation to the 14 equals 9a plus 3b, so I'm adding just these two together right here. So 14 plus negative 4 gives me 10. And 9a plus negative 4a gives me 5a. And uh, I'm sorry, this should be a negative 2b, oops, and this should be a negative c. There we go. So negative 3b um, plus, uh, sorry, 3b plus negative 2b gives me a positive b, and the negative c and positive c cancel out. So now I have a second equation here that also has two variables. So I'm going to take these two equations with the two variables that we just found, and I'm going to solve them using a system of equations as well. So I just cleaned up everything that we had here. Now, again, um, I'm going to work with these two equations with two variables that are down here, and I'm going to try to, again, eliminate one of the two variables. Since both of the b terms have a 1 in front of them, I can easily eliminate the b by multiplying the first equation by negative 1. When I do that, I get negative 4 equals 3a, I'm sorry, negative 3a. Write this a little nicer. Negative 3a minus b. And then I take the second equation here, and I don't change anything on it. And then when I add these two together, negative 4 plus 10 gives me a positive 6. Negative 3a plus 5a gives me a positive 2a. And now all I have to do is solve for a. To do that, I divide both sides by 2. And I get a equals 3. Now that I know what a is, I can plug that equation, or that value into this equation here. I could also plug it into this equation. It doesn't make a difference. I'm going to use the one on bottom because I have a little bit more space to write down there. So I have the 10 equals 5 times a, which we just learned is 3, plus b. 5 times 3 gives me a 15, so I have 10 equals 15 plus b. And I can subtract that 15 from both sides. And I end up finding out that b is equal to negative 5. So now I have two of my values. I have the b equals negative 5, and I have the a equals 3. Knowing that, I can come back up to this original set of equations, the three that we found originally. And I can plug into any one of those three equations, plug in my a value, plug in my b value, and then solve for c. Since the first equation is 0 equals a plus b plus c, it's probably going to be the easiest to plug into that equation, so that's the one I'm going to use. 
So I take and plug in 0 equals a, which we just found, is 3, plus b, which we just found to be negative 5, and we don't know what c is yet, so we're still looking for that. Now 3 plus negative 5 is going to give me negative 2, negative 2 plus c equals 0. I add 2 to both sides, and I find out that c equals 2. So now I have my a, my b, and my c, which are all three of the unknowns that we're looking for, so that we could plug into the standard form of the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So when we plug in, we get y equals oops, 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. And that would be our final equation, and that would be the equation that would, um, or that would be the equation of the polynomial for the data that we were originally given at the start of this video. I hope that this explanation has helped you realize how to find the equation of polynomials using the finite differences method and systems of equations um, when you're given a table of data. Hope it was helpful.